Moments away from tip-off, a sellout crowd is ready at Mohegan Sun, UConn and Georgetown for the Big East Women's Basketball Championship. Let's welcome in the third member of our team tonight, Kim Adams. Thank you, John. Well, unfortunately, we will be without two stars in tonight's game. For UConn, Aliyah Edwards remains out with a broken nose she suffered in the quarterfinal rounds of this tournament. The plan is still to have her back for the NCAA tournament. As for Georgetown, they will be without the sixth woman of the year, Brianna Scott, who suffered a lower extremity injury last night in the semifinals. I spoke with Georgetown's Grace Ann Bennett and Kelsey Ransom. They are thrilled to still have Brianna on the bench with them. They said she brings an energy and electricity, and they are confident they will still hear her voice out there, John. Thank you, Kim. Brianna Scott yesterday after going down with that injury late in the win over Creighton. This was so powerful. Putting the name on the bracket. It's been so many reasons that this Georgetown team has made it to this point, and it's an individual like that. The understanding that she still can add to this team and bring a passion that will help them perform on the floor. Let's get to our starting lineups. They're sponsored by Jeep. There's only one. And on the other side, Sarah, with Aliyah Edwards still out for UConn, it means that Ice Brady, the five-star redshirt freshman, is now getting her opportunity. And, and she's made the most of it. It's not only how she's been able to understand her role, how to fit in, but the way in which she has had her conditioning up, be able to play the amount of minutes, the usage, and perform how she has has been something very important for Gina Oriana and this UConn team. Our officials, Joe Vasili, Tiara Cruz, Katie Lukinich. Georgetown in the black, UConn in the white. And it's out to Jenkins, who's long on the three. And that's where UConn will test Georgetown. If they can knock down perimeter shots, they are a team that is predicated on their defense, but they found ways to score against Creighton along with stopping them. Connecticut beat Marquette in the semis, 58 to 29. Held the Golden Eagles scoreless in the final 15 minutes of the game. Six on the shot clock. There's Ice Brady. There you go, John. Nice touch that all began with the penetration by K.K. Arnold. And that's going to be key against this Georgetown defense. Shift them, rotate them. They will give you different looks, and UConn is able to identify things quickly. Georgetown beating a Creighton team that entered at 24 and 4 yesterday. 55 to 46 to get here. And this is where towards the end of the shot clock the shift happened, kind of moving it outside, but it all started with the penetration by Nika Mule. KK Arnold finding a quick look for Brady. You're gonna need a lot more of that as we now see some full court pressure here by Georgetown. Beckers to Brady. That was altered in a foul. On one side of this matchup, Darnell Haney, the interim head coach of this Georgetown team, certainly making a case to get that interim tag removed and become the permanent head coach, taking over for Tasha Butts. We'll tell you about that in a moment. Gino Oriema, meanwhile, the Hall of Famer, one of only three with Tara Vandeveer and Mike Krzyzewski with 1,200 wins. An icon of the game, to think about where he's at, what he's accomplished, and what he still hopes to with this group. And Darnell Haney, it, it, it is a storybook. Really season for this group, but it's still not finished. And that was a big part in talking with Kelsey Ransom. And she said, reflecting back, we're not finished. And so there's no reflection left yet. We still feel like we have a lot of work to do. Your head coach, Tasha Butts, passing away from cancer in October. And now they are here in the championship game playing for her. As the Huskies give it back, it goes back to Georgetown. But to think that these young women, Sarah, of Georgetown, three days before their season began, were at a funeral mass for their fallen coach. And then three days later, we're playing. They started the season nine and one. First 20 plus win campaign in over a decade. Strength, you see it. And it's a reason why they are playing here right now. 10 on the shot clock for Kelsey Ransom. Trying to thread the needle with Bennett. It's a jump ball and the arrow belongs to UConn. Big time collapse. 
by UConn in the middle of the floor, and Georgetown's going to want to pound it on the inside. This is a beautiful entry pass and positioning by Grace Ann Bennett, but you see you got three white jerseys all collapsing in, and for as much as we're talking about Georgetown's defense, because it is their strength, UConn was exceptional at that end yesterday. Becker's got a step, delivering the dish, and Brady has been plenty active early. Brady has been active early, putting her in good spots on the floor to move around, but Ariel Jenkins is doing her best to protect the basket, protect the rim. Hey, and we're talking a lot about Darnell Haney. He wasn't kidding uh, about the suit jacket not lasting very long, John Fanta. I, I don't even think it lasted. We're, we're at 7.37 right now, but I, I, I think at the nine-minute mark, it, it was already off. He told his girls he had bought a suit to wear. Monday. So before they left for the Big East tournament, he said, pack your bags long enough to be here till Monday, and we better be there because I bought a suit that's fire and I want to wear on Monday night. And here they are, here he is, and the suit jacket off no quick. And sparking his team early as Shade comes down with it. The Husky started yesterday with seven unanswered. Paige Becker's automatic. And she's looking for a foul call. They're finishing through traffic, but that shows her strength and ability to still play through that type of contact. And Georgetown is physical. Gino Oriamo knows that that is a big part of how they're going to want to play against this group. Now Brady with a deflection. The Huskies on the run. Mika Mule. UConn looks the part of the champs. Timeout Georgetown. Mohegan rises. Georgetown has been powered by defense all season long, and it's translating at the Big East Tournament. Well, it, and it's not just been very good. It has been elite with how they have been playing to look at the fact that this is their first Big East Tournament final appearance, but how they had hold both a, of Creighton and St. John's to quarter career season low in quarters, both of these last two games. and. Creighton, I mean, you look at what that game was and the high-powered offense that Creighton possesses and the fact that Georgetown is able to do that on the defensive end in this moment. So you look at the three award winners here, the co-defensive player of the year and Kelsey Ransom. Talked about the, the loss of Scott as the sixth woman of the year. Grace Ann Bennett, two-time sportsmanship award winner, doing so again this season. Right now, it's the Huskies' defense that has set the tone of this game. And they get it back because of Brady's activity. If you go back to yesterday's semifinal against Marquette to the start of this game, Connecticut has not allowed a point in their last 18 minutes of game time. It's extraordinary, and you can tell how locked in, how focused they are. And I think if you look at Ice Brady, what she's been able to do, sometimes playing behind someone in a senior of Aaliyah Edwards' status, and you feel like you're filling in. Now you understand the role that you have, what is needed, the responsibility, and she has filled every part of that thus far. Brady slashes in, and Ice Brady has come to play. Replacing Aaliyah Edwards again tonight. And it's the movement, movement off the ball. And, and she's got openings because of the threats that everyone else is on the floor. This floor is littered with three-point shooters for UConn. And so because of that, it allows for those lanes and spacing. There's Maya Bembry. There's Beckers with the rejection. It'll stay with the Hoyas. Watch this cutting action. This is a great find. The quick pass, touch pass by Nika Mule, but it starts with getting it to the second side. Paige Becker's averaging 1.3 blocks per game as a perimeter player. Grace Ann Bennett with the bucket for the Hoyas to break up their drought, and then UConn gives it back. Grace Ann Bennett 
graduate player for this Georgetown team, such an important factor for how they've performed. That's it, not just in the skill set, but the leadership. You can tell it when you speak to her. Catch and shoot three for Claude is an air ball. Darnell Haney called Grace Ann Bennett the heart and soul of this operation. Here's Beckers, combining for 56 points in the first two games, stopped in her tracks here. Arnold, will they give her continuation? They do. And that's the challenging part for UConn as you see the movement in trying to stay in front of your Georgetown. Look at KK Arnold, that's a great screen set by Paige Beckers. It forces the switch and it's all those little actions that there's a feel, there's an understanding and there's a continuity with how UConn plays and that's what allows some of those openings. And then you've got players that have got the step, got the burst to get to the basket. Gino Auriemma said it to us earlier today, Sarah. He goes, look, we might be down to seven players, but the expectation in our program is if we can field five on the floor, there's no excuses. Fought off. And that goes off of Bennett. It and obviously, this is a sizable lead for UConn out of the gates. They came ready to go. You see the sharpness, the competitive nature. And for Georgetown, the hope is they get settled in a little bit. So can you force some turnovers? Can you find your way to some easy baskets? There hasn't been a lot of that. And for a team that's not a great perimeter shooting team, and UConn understands that, that is a part of the scout, the game plan, discipline of forcing those shots, packing into the paint. If you find your way to some easier ones and things don't look quite as bleak here early on, I think Georgetown's going to settle themselves in because they are a fearless team that deserves to be here. That girl's just cut. She never stopped moving. She'll go in the line for two. So similar to what we see with Aaliyah Edwards, the ability to have your big facilitate right out the top and Paige Becker's turning the corner. Georgetown trying to trail her. You've always got to be cognizant of her ability to take a three-point shot, work some of those handoffs. And UConn just does such a good job of varying up the places and the spaces that they have different individuals on the floor. They are, are very strategic on where they put players in the line. You've had Paige Becker's son this season. You've seen Caitlin Clark and have had her on Fox throughout the year. What is unique about Paige's skill set? I, I think to all of these players, they're all unique, and I'm not one that loves comparisons at all, but I think when you look at Paige and how she's able to impact a game on the defensive end, it, it, there is few things like that. There's Kelsey Ransom from downtown. Big shot, big three for Georgetown. Because she, she makes reads and she anticipates and sees things ahead of time in ways that most players do not. And we talk about that on the offensive side. You see in her transition passing and her passing in the half court. She is very selective and smart about the shots that she takes. That's why she's so highly efficient from the field and from three. Bennett from the elbow, back to back makes for the Hoyas. And here you go, the Hoyas. Again, settling in, and that's a part of it. We mentioned this is the first time in program history being here, and it, it's one thing to to really step up into the moment, but sometimes it takes a couple minutes to get yourself settled in, a place where UConn is so comfortable. Nika Mule. Changer this season, Nika Mule shooting 41% from three. At every position on the perimeter, you've got players that can stretch out and also can attack the basket. That is some deadly combinations that are tough to match up against. It'll stay with the Hoyas with eight on the shot clock. Kelsey Ransom, a big one here. Doesn't take a ton of three-point shots. Still an area working for efficiency, but that one was much needed. There you go with Bennett, just squaring up, facing up. Shot clock at three, Ben Bree. She's got that 15-foot game. And, and that's where a lot of the bread and butter is for Georgetown. They like to get to the basket. They work the post play, but they're 
very good in the mid range. So if they find some of those pockets, that will be advantageous for them trying to find ways to score. Catch and shoot for KK Arnold in and out. Ice Brady's on the offensive glass. And Brady is playing with poise down there. Playing with poise, aggressive. She's been bouncy. She's moving so well and working the inside position. Let's send it back over to Kim Adams. Well, John and Sarah, we've been talking to Gino Oriema throughout the weekend about Ice Brady. He said so far the most impressive thing is the stamina she's been able to play. He said normally she can't even go 40 minutes in practice. She gave them the full 40 minutes yesterday in the semifinal. She only averaged about 15 minutes per game coming into the tournament. And just he spoke so highly about her passing ability, her ability to be a willing screener. He likes her shooting ability. He said she shoots the heck out of the ball in practice. So we are starting to see that translate into the game. She sure looks extremely confident here in this championship setting. Kim nailed it. In, in everything she said, we've already seen examples of the passing off the top, the shooting stroke. She's got a beautiful one and a consistency in seeing that go through even with range and, and overall. I mean, stamina, there, there is nothing that can replicate a game, and then there's nothing that can replicate when you get into the postseason. This type of conference tournament play, eventually NCAA tournament play. Paige Beckers, another swipe. Gina Oriama told us she doesn't get enough credit for who she is defensively. That one off. It's that, but it's a quick hand-eye coordination, quickness, the reads. Again, she just she does a great job in being a step ahead and knowing what's next on each play for opponents. Claude and Mule going down hard with Claude fighting for it. It goes back to the Huskies. You said UConn is comfortable in this building. The Huskies all time at Mohegan Sun. 40 and one. Pretty big numbers. They're almost as popular as you are in here, John Fanta. <laughs> I mean, I can't walk anywhere with you because stop left and right, selfies, autographs. Well, thank you, Sarah. Biggest celebrity on the block. No, no. That would be Gino or Paige. Oh, no, they got some competition. Beckers is fouled and won. She just responded with, I'm the most popular human in this building. <laughs> She's like, that joke isn't even funny. Oh! That's bad. She is cold, gets fouled. Opportunity for a four-point play. Her teammate, Nika Mule, coming through. And this team, not only are they focused, not only has there been attention to detail, but you could tell they're having fun playing with one another. And Georgetown on this Big East tournament run wins over Xavier, St. John's, and Creighton. The most points they allowed in a quarter in this tournament, 14. Different monster tonight. Shot clock at eight. Down to six, pull up Jay is long, and Mule with the rebound. Here's Arnold with the kick. Ashlyn Shade, extra pass. It's poetry in motion from the Huskies. With eight, it's Ransom to Bembry. Bembry with a silencer. Three seconds here for Beckers. Beckers from half court. As close to perfect 
as it could get for the reigning champions to start. And they are playing through the pass. The ball has been popping, and UConn has got it rocking here at Mohegan Sun. We are in for a Big East champion. First quarter's over. UConn up 17. You've been getting down and out about the liars and the dirty, dirty. Big East basketball is sponsored by Jeep. There's only one. Welcome back to Mohegan Sun. Connecticut up 17 on Georgetown after one. And as much as the Huskies scored 28, this defense has been relentless. They got after it. Stayed in front of their own, and they did a good job with help collapsing on the inside. They understand that what Georgetown wants to do is penetrate and get it in the post, and they have been scrappy, pressuring the perimeter on the ball in passing lanes. And you see it right here. Georgetown has had a really difficult time trying to get the ball to where they want to go. And when they do, they are smothering the basketball, working through screens. I mean, it, this has just been a display in particular. We're talking about Paige Beckers, the Big East player of the year. She's such a, an impactful part of that. A couple blocks here, some steals, and the defense has generated a lot of early looks on the offensive side. We get to sit in on these team shoot-arounds. When you sit in on a UConn shoot-around, what do you see? I, I see just Again, attention to detail is the thing that always stands out to me. What Gino sees, what the coaching staff sees, every one of his players attentive to what they're trying to do, running through their own stuff, running through the opponent things. This is why, fans, I know you, you tease me and everyone that we work with. I, I don't say a word during shoot-arounds. I, I am one of, I don't want, I don't want a coach, I don't want Gino to turn and start yelling at me for talking while they're going through their scout. Our great producer, Carol Langley, said, speak up, I can't hear you. I said, uh-uh. Oh. Beckers can't hit the first one, but bounces right back, and she's already got 10. And that's for Georgetown, some of the little things and just the narrow margin of error against this team, taking care of the basketball, taking care of the glass, not giving up looks like that, being really smart about getting back in transition. A part of that, too, is shot selection. With eight, it's Ransom, their leader. With four, Kelsey Ransom driving down to two. It's at one. Shot clock violation. This Huskies defense keeps soaring. I said it earlier, it, you focus so much about some of the strengths of UConn and how they can attack you offensively. The shooters that they have, playmakers, creators, bigs, obviously very undermanned given some of the key players that they are missing. But it's a defensive end that's a separator for them in this conference, in this game thus far, and as they have played through the course of the Big East tournament. And right now you have two freshmen and a redshirt freshman as part of that defensive effort. There's a lot of youth. But as Coach Oriyama told us, the standard here remains the same no matter what class you're in. Shade, the Big East Freshman of the Year, Ashlyn Shade. And, and you said uh, uh, it's youth, but it's a mix of youth and veterans. When you have the presence of players like a Nika Mule and like a Paige Beckers to then play alongside Shade and Arnold and Brady, you better, you better fit in. You better fit in and understand your role and know exactly what you need to do because that's the way things work top to bottom for this group. And, and again, the same, this Georgetown team, they have been tremendous. This is a very big challenge, but I do believe if they just continue to settle in here, starting on this defensive end, try and find your way to some steals, some picks, some easier points to see it go through. Page Buckets, already 13. Talk about this Georgetown team entering tonight, winning seven in a row for the first time in seven years. Rivera is off. Mule pulling it down, the possession arrow with Connecticut. Ooh, Paige Beckers is just pouring it on 
Um, look at how deep she is. Perfection in the rotation. Good little dribble handoff from Nico Mule to get that going. Again, how UConn just flows into their sets, into their actions. The, the placement on the floor. They are in sync and connected in where they need to be. Winners of eight straight are the Huskies coming into tonight. Have not lost since that game at South Carolina in February. Arnold with six on the shot clock. That's picked off by Bembry. There's that Hoya defense. Bembry. And again, that's trying to get an easy basket. That's where it starts. Can you shoot some gaps? Can you pressure the ball? The Sukhan team, not one that's going to turn it over and give it up easy, so that, that's easier for me to say than actually do. But it, it's opportunities like that to try and get yourself going a little bit. To your point, that's been what the Huskies have corrected as this tournament's gone on. Arnold swishes it home. She's got a pair of triples. And, and so think about how many different players we have said knocking down shots, and that's where the challenge lies. It's a, a pick your poison of how you're trying to help, where you're trying to be, the rotations, what those look like. Be because of every spot on the floor, you have a threat. And with this four-guard lineup, they can run. Beckers, oh, the Huskies are an avalanche. And Darnell Haney's trying to stop this powerhouse. There's nothing stopping them right now. We're watching the greatness of Paige Beckers right now. Uh, we said this earlier, two-time Big East Player of the Year. She came in as a freshman, was not only the National Player of the Year, Big East Player of the Year. You look at, among the name like Maya Moore and others, 28 points per game in this Big East tournament, 10 and a half rebounds, leading the UConn Huskies and leading those playing here in the Big East tournament. And to think about coming back, from the injuries she dealt with, really this being the first year coming back and what she was able to do, the comfort level, not only that she has found for herself on the floor, but elevating the level of her teammates, go through the list of, of the players that UConn has been missing throughout the course of the season, even going back to the preseason. And, and again, it's, it's for this UConn team, the expectations don't change. And Paige Beckers is a big part of continuing to just set the tone for that. That's an answer that the Hoyas needed out of the timeout. Yasmin Ott. You think about it this way. St. John scored 44 the whole game against this Georgetown defense. Creighton 46. UConn's already sitting at 42 in not even 15 minutes. Catch and shoot. That one short. For Cowan. It, and this is the tough part with Georgetown. When you're missing shots, it allows you kind of to get out and run, get to their offense early. You're forced to not always have your half court defense set as much as you would like. And that's something that was a little different in that Georgetown break game. Beckers gets her own miss. The give to Ice Brady. 11 for Brady. And it's not just any Georgetown defense. They're sixth in the country in scoring deep. Just over 53 points per game allowed. Bennett is fouled. And there's a handful of things at play. One, a Big East tournament title. Mm -hmm. And UConn, though, understanding what this means for future postseason hopes and CAA tournament. What that looks like in, in the possibilities of seeding, which I know we'll get into later throughout this game, them clicking at the right time of year, it, and also knowing what it means to step on the stage of a championship. And we talked about that in the open, and, and there is something to be said for players who have been here before, expect to be here, and that does not waver regardless. John Fanta, Sarah Kustak, Kim Adams with you from Mohegan Sun. Connecticut seeking a 22nd Big East Tournament crown tonight. Beckers had that rejected by Jenkins. Catch and shoot for Cowan. 
She came up big yesterday. She did. She hit some early first half three-point shots that were integral in, in helping Georgetown to get that halftime lead. Just really timely baskets. They're going to need more of that. Neil travels. Cowan had spent three years at Wagner and over a thousand points in her career. Coming up on the Jeep Halftime Report, we'll look at highlights from this game and preview the men's Big East oh, Tournament. Oh, 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 the garden's going to be popping, John Fanta. I know you're going to be there. It's ready. And talk about some fun storylines. Ooh. Can't wait. We're going to be locked in. The Huskies men, the number one seed. Georgetown men will be in action Wednesday against Providence. That has some appetite to it. That one falls for Jenkins, and the Hoyas have hit three straight shots. And there you go. Mule. And Georgetown stringing together their best couple of minutes we've seen in this game thus far. And, and you can't look at the score. You can't worry about the deficit if you're Georgetown. Ransom is fouled. It, it, it is simple as it sounds, it, it is just possession by possession. Because at this point, you can't think about trying to cut into this lead with the way that UConn is playing. You hope at some point some of that hot shooting may wear down just a little bit for UConn and maybe some of the shots start to go through if you're Georgetown. It, and what they want to play is a more half-court game, slow the game down. And that's something that I think the more if they make some shots, get to the free throw line, they may be able to do. We got a chance to catch up with Kelsey Ransom this morning. What impressed you? What stood out to you the most meeting this individual? It, it is the moxie, the grit she brings to the table, the grace that she has, the, the understanding of what this moment means, what the season means, the leader she is for a team. And she's an extraordinary individual and human to begin with, let alone player. Now Ott, who has not played much in this tournament, gets fouled. And Georgetown has scored eight unanswered in 90 seconds. And she said something I love. She had a lot of she's a psych major, and you can understand why. I think she's going to help a lot of people in the future. Um, but she was talking about defensively in the challenge against UConn and what you do communicating defensively and asked about how they switch things up and, and just the sophistication of a lot of things that they try to do. And she said, we're not we're not always right. But she said, if, if we're all wrong, then we're going to be right together because we're always communicating, we're always talking, we're always going to try and find a way to figure it out. And that's what the Hoyas have shown throughout this tournament, throughout this season. But staying together and, and problem solving, navigating things collectively as a unit. And that's going to be the test here closing out not only this first half, but when they step into that second half. Seven on the shot clock for Connecticut. Brady had that deflected, down to three. Arnold has to heave. And this Georgetown defense has come to life in a 9-0 run. It, it get a little bit of a burst and feel good going in to the locker room. That's what it's all about. There are swings in a game. There's runs of momentum. Georgetown is, is trying to grab one here. Ransom, a little out of control here. Another tie-up, a possession arrow with Georgetown. We talked about this Hoyas program playing all season for Tasha Butts with the Tasha Tough on their jersey. Darnell Haney told us Tasha Toughness is about being gritty, but also being stubborn in a game. Ignoring that scoreboard, as you just mentioned, and Georgetown on a 9-0 run, Gino Oriema would like to talk. It, and that's part of it, too, because both of these coaches, both of these teams, it, it's understanding that there's still a lot of time left in this game. So what does that look like? And we keep mentioning some of the players that have been impactful for UConn to have this lead and missing Aaliyah Edwards. Tonight's game, yesterday's game, certainly a major factor for UConn, but how impressive has Ice Brady been? The redshirt freshman, 6'3", out of San Diego, and just showcasing the versatility, the finesse, the quickness, the strength she presents, understanding where to be and how to move in the wake of her teammates. And whether it's on the defensive end, we see how she's working, using the footwork, and also just running the floor. And to have a player with that size, frame, physicality, but also good feel and understanding is something that's been fun to watch and also good touch on her shot. 
Ransom foul, and Gino Oriema is fired up. It's on Caden Samuels. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. It's a tough call. And tell if she got an arm or reaching in some, but was trying to move her feet, get out of the way. It looked like there was a lot of ball off that play. A 10-0 run for Georgetown over the last two and a half minutes. at seven. Brady to Arnold. Arnold with two. Arnold with the Euro. Got her own miss. Can't stick it back. And Georgetown has been tough. In particular, on, on Arnold. Ransom is short. Even little things, though. The last play, there was an over-the-top pass that Beckers had earlier on Ransom. Ransom did a great job denial off that play. It, it, it feels like Georgetown's having a better understanding of some of the sets, some of the actions, and how they're trying to defend them. Ten on the shot clock here. UConn over the last five. Beckers with 16 in this first half, down to two. And another giveaway by the Huskies. Their fifth. This is what goes back to this morning when Gino Oriema told us, look, we're, with where we stand, with how they can settle into a game defensively, we better get off to a nice start. And, and that's a big part. One, having a lead is forcing a team to play faster that doesn't really want to in playing catch up. And also one that, as we mentioned, sometimes struggles from the perimeter shooting, so it's not quite as easy to cut into those deficits quickly. Beckers to the deck. Possession arrow with UConn, the Huskies started this game, folks, with 11 straight points. And, and they started lights out from the three-point line. That was collectively from everyone on the floor. Again, it, it's balanced out some. For some of their misses, again, Georgetown, I'm very impressed with their composure, their poise, and you would anticipate that, that once they get settled into the game, the environment, an understanding of how UConn wants to play. It's, it's been a much better showing here in the second quarter. You don't get here without points. They beat a Creighton team that was 25-4 and four before yesterday's game. They kick it out to Shade. Ashton Shade, their eighth triple. But there's the example. Everyone's so worried about Beckers and cutting to the basket in the empty baseline that you have. The defense sucks in. It opens up that perimeter look for Shea. Eight seconds here for Jenkins. She turned it over. Arnold with four. Arnold with two to Shea. And the Huskies are up by 22 at the break. Connecticut drills eight triples. Paige Beckers with 16. Ice Brady with 11. And it's not just been about their points. It's about the intensity they've shown defensively. Kim is with Gina Oriema. Thanks, John. Coach, I know the offense stalled there for a few minutes, but when things were going well, what do you need to get back to against this strong Georgetown defense? Well, we need to keep them off the free throw line. You know, uh, we were attacking them in transition. It's hard to get transition buckets when, you know, we're putting them on the free throw line. Well, somebody's putting them on the free throw line. So um, I think we got to get back to that. We got to get back to our movement. It's that, it's natural for us to, to have that happen because we get a little bit tired, you know, and we don't move as well. Uh, but they're a really good defensive team. So, you know, for us to get 47 in the first half, I'm pretty happy with that. And Paige is doing Paige things, but you've gotten 11 points and five rebounds from Ice Brady. What has impressed you about her performance in this expanded role? Well, you know, uh, you, 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 she always had it in her, I think. 
but we never quite knew for sure. So now we just got to hold on for another 20 minutes and hope she's got, you know, it's like the gas tank, you know, when it goes, you, you, you have no idea exactly how many miles you got left. So we're going to find out. All right. We'll be waiting to see. Thanks, Coach. And say that the gas tank is filled up enough. Tonight's first half star stats comparison is sponsored by Jeep. There's only one. And it's not just about the numbers in terms of points, but the efficiency. Five of 11 for Paige Beckers, three of four for Ice Brady, both playing the entirety of that first half. And these two have been the key, but also it's been a collective effort by all of these Huskies that stepped on the floor. Connecticut 25 and one this season when they lead at the half and they have an All-American, the unstoppable Paige. Georgetown trying to spark something here in the third quarter with UConn up by 22. Let's rejoin the third member of our team, Kim Adams. Thank you, John. Well, I just caught up with Georgetown head coach Darnell Haney. He was locked in like we always hear him talk to his players about. Just a couple notes he talked to his group about at the half. He said, we have to continue to attack. We have to get to the free throw line and get points when the clock is stopped. And his final message to them was, we have to be ready to shoot the ball in our opportunities when it comes to us, John. So we will see what type of response the Hoyas come out at with after an inspired last couple minutes of the half there. And, and that's great putting it together, Kim, because that's a big part for Georgetown of how they're going to be able to generate a little bit of offense. We heard Gino talk to you going into the halftime locker room about the free throw line, and obviously that's a big part for Darnell Haney and, and his group. Attacking, getting to the basket, trying to find some of those driving lanes, penetration, whether it is the free throw line or finding their way to some layups. It, it'll be a big part of moving this UConn defense around. Georgetown was able to go on a 10-0 run near the end of the first half. They look for Bennett, but they give it away. And in that first half, 14 points off turnovers for UConn. So if for as much as we're talking about Georgetown, if they can try and manufacture that, that's exactly what the Huskies are doing. Ball protection will be important for the Hoyas. Story in the first half for UConn, 8 for 15 from three. Ransom stuff mule. play here by Ransom and you see the fall by Mule but it felt like Mule was the one initiating contact early on and Ransom has come out ready to play you see the instincts getting in passing lanes blocking ability she's got quickness length and good physicality that's why she was named the East Co defensive player of the year with Villanova's Christina Dawson Beckers versus Ransom greatness versus greatness and Beckers is fouled that's an example. Beckers has got so much even at the end of her dribble. And for a player that is decisive and where she wants to get to on the floor, she doesn't get sped up. So you see Ransom's doing everything she can to blanket her and make it tough for her to get to her spot. But even once Becker does, she's got the length and the strength to still make a play. Gino Ariema talked about Paige Beckers this past week when she was named Big East Player of the Year and Scholar Athlete of the Year. And Gino just said, never ceases to amaze him how she fits everything into a day. The ultimate student athlete. And he said her parents were most proud of that Scholar Athlete of the Year honor. All while doing this on the court, Sarah, a 3.9 GPA. Impressive, impressive, impressive stuff. Now it's zone from the Huskies. All over that. Backers is short this time, but Shade picks it up. Backers tries again, and two misses on this trip. Yasminov starting the second half for Georgetown after injecting energy late in the first. Really nice job on the defensive side, her ability to pressure the basketball. Ott 
points. Battle for the board this time, and it belongs to Connecticut. Here's the hardware collectors for the Huskies. Yeah, pretty much says it all. I mean, this is a UConn Huskies team, 18-0 in the Big East, Coach of the Year for Gino Ariema. And again, you think about the players that they are missing this season, sitting on the bench in their sweatsuits. Got a bloody nose for Beckers? We do. You said it. Down to seven available players. Ashlyn Shade there, the freshman of the year. It was not designed for her to play this big of a role, and she has. See, yeah, Paige gets smacked across the face by Ransom. They've got some floor cleanup duty with the blood here. That's what they're waiting on. But Becker's not only doing all of this, but using her name, image, and likeness money to give back to the community. She's taken up numerous volunteer initiatives as well, giving back to her native Minnesota. The Huskies played in Minnesota earlier this year in a game, in a game you saw here on FS1, and you can sense how much she loves her roots. It's why she gives back to local food pantries, to a grocery store in her native Minnesota. And with her teammate Aaliyah Edwards watching, she has stepped up while Edwards is out with her nose injury. I think. Let's send it over to Kim. Well, not much of an X's and O's here, John, but Aaliyah Edwards, Paige Becker is definitely sharing a little laugh there. The, the nose plug sisters for the week. And Paige was over here wondering why the officials weren't looking at that play. She felt there may have been a little something extra there. But we've seen a, a couple of those this week for the Huskies. Officials not taking a look. Right now they're just focused on dealing with the blood. And the nose plug in for Beckers, who has led the way, and Darnell Haney, meanwhile, using this opportunity. It's it's amazing this man's intensity with his team. He looks like he could be playing yes. out there with, but that's what's gotten them to this point, and even us getting a chance to speak with him pregame and, and just to talk about what has gotten them here and yes X's nose and schemes and your game plan and what you're going to get ready for but he understands the championship comes down to a lot more than just that the intangibles that we have seen the Hoya show up with each and every night he was a high school coach just 11 years ago Brady from Mule once again getting her on the move where she's coming out on the floor. You got to stay attached in some capacity to these three-point shooters. And we said it, Georgetown fourth game in four nights. And so with the style of play by UConn, fast, physical, you got to wonder too, at what point some of that fatigue sets in. Four on the shot clock. Not looking for Bennett, and there is Brady. The whistle here and a double dribble is called on Arnold. Yeah, seems like right there she just picks it up, puts two hands on it. Joe Fazili, Tiara Cruz, Katie Lukinich, these are final four officials on this game tonight. the Seton Hall transfer. Kraft, able to keep it. Into Bembry, Becker has altered that, and then Brady punched it out. Shot clock didn't reset because the ball never hit the rim. It's down to seven. Ransom to Bennett. Bennett with three over Brady. Really nice patience. The entry pass by Ransom, the footwork and movement by Bennett. 
Ransom easily could have gotten rushed there as the shot clock is winding down. Like the methodical nature that they played with to make that play happen. And now a steal by Ransom. Kelsey Ransom, the Hoyas leaders with back-to-back -back buckets. Off the dribble, Paige Beckers has 20. That's tough. Ransom is doing everything she can to stay in front. She's got the quickness to be ready for that step back, trying to come back out and contest. That is just a tough shot. Ransom can't hit. Beckers with her 23rd game of the season with 20 plus points. Nine on the last 10. Beckers again. Arnold with the offensive board. Now Peckers with a dime to Shade. Bodies to the floor. You've got three of them and a foul. It'll go back to Georgetown. The senior Kelsey Ransom is doing everything she can to try and keep Georgetown in this one. Beautiful entry pass to the inside to her teammate and Bennett this time. The quick steal. Ooh, little cross. Finish at the other end. Trying to generate some offense out of that defense. She's also, she's had a couple nice shots and plays that she's created that haven't gone down, but you could tell that she's being really aggressive here on the offensive side. Already part of history. Ransom, Bennett, and La Hoyas. This is the first time this program has ever been in the Big East Women's Basketball Championship game. Maya Bembry with five. The kick to the corner. Becker's got a piece of that. It's down to one. And that UConn defense forces another shot clock violation. And what they're able to do, I've mentioned this earlier, because Georgetown isn't a highly effective three-point shooting team, they are boxes and elbows. So the amount of help they can provide and really sag in and be there, it doesn't give a lot of openings for post-entry passes, for penetration if they do. It always has a wall or showing bodies, and that makes it really tough on Georgetown because they're not knocking down three-point shots to stretch you up. It's not really their game. Arnold with an extra pass to Shane. In and out. By the way, Beckers, four blocks tonight. She's up to a Huskies best 46 on the year. <laughs> Catch and shoot for Bennett. Long. And UConn has a wide open lane here. Shane with some help from Arnold. She missed the bunny. Loose ball. And back to the Hoyas. Leading us to a timeout. Big East Championship game. Bodies to the hardwood and you've gone up big. Big East basketball is sponsored by Jeep. There's only one. Jonathan the Husky is happy, UConn up by 24. But for Georgetown, their leaders, Grace Ann Bennett, Kelsey Ransom, putting together a recent run. Well, and Grace Ann Bennett has done a really nice job in how she's cutting and moving without the basketball. That's where she's at her best, working with her back to the basket, facing up against Ice Brady, who provides a very challenging and tough defense. And you see it right here, the two-man game between both Bennett and Ransom has proven to be effective in a variety of places. They're going to need more of it, but thus far here in this third quarter, it's been some nice chemistry between those two players that we see often. It is amazing that this team is here in this game tonight. Again, preseason number 10 in the Big East coaches poll. Preseason number 10 pick. First ever championship appearance. Samuels with an air ball. And you lose your head coach to cancer in October. That type of adversity that, as Darnell Haney said, that the mental health battle with that for his kids to have to cope with it. But he said it just made us stronger. We thought of Tasha the whole time, Tasha Butts who played for Pat Summit at Tennessee and was so tough.
They are shining lights uh, of part of the legacy that she has left it, and you can see it in the tenacity that they show up with it, in the grace that they are off the court as well. Three on the shot clock, Bennett with a head of steam, and she'll go on the line for a pair, fouled by Newell. And that's something that Kim Adams was hearing Darnell Haney did telling his girls through some of these timeout huddles of, of penetrating, attacking more, trying to drive more. And as we mentioned, it has not been easy against this UConn defense. They have been stout. They've been quick to help. They've been packing it in the paint and, and doing a really good job of, of protecting the lane. But Georgetown, throughout the course of these last couple minutes, they have found some of those slivers. And there is that Tasha Tough ribbon that the Hoyas have been wearing all throughout this season. The Big East held Tasha tough games as well throughout the season. Just really powerful how proud these ladies of Georgetown have made. Their lane head coach Kelsey Ransom told us yesterday, I just hope she could see this. And as we told her, she's watching. It's a proud program. There's Nika Mule. are the Yukon Huskies and they have come ready here tonight. Shot clock at 10 for Cowan, the Wagner transfer. Gets it back, had that deflected, that's Becker's fifth block, it's down to three and Bennett is fouled. Foul on Brady, just her first as Beckers comes off for a breather. And, and that's the other thing with Beckers and the blocks as we continue to see. One is the reads, two is the quickness, hand-eye coordination, all those things. She obviously has a lot of length in her frame, but a lot of players don't always try to actually block perimeter shots, block three-point shots. They're coming out and trying to get a hand in the face, block her vision to contest you, hard challenge it. She's going for the ball. And it's impressive to watch, too, because she's got such a great sense of recovery. Arnold Jets, but Ransom said no way. Now in transition, a spin, and Samuels, the freshman for Connecticut, with a block of her own. So Becker's on the bench. Again, the Huskies, only seven available players, with Aliyah Edwards out with that nose injury. Ten on the shot clock for Mule. Off Shade's hands with five. Shade, the freshman of the year in the Big East with two. And there's a shot clock violation forced by the nation's sixth best defense. And Gino Oriama says, I'd like my All-American Big East player of the year back on the court. He said, look, it comes down to Paige Beckers and Nika Mule. They have to set the tone, possession in, possession out. Here's Ransom. Seven points tonight, driving on Beckers and with a tough finish. It's been fun watching those two go at one another. You know, Beckers is putting up big time numbers, but you, you got the two best players guarding one another, going at one another. The level of competitiveness. Samuels with the shot clock down to six again, and that one deflected. It'll stay with UConn with five. Five seconds here. Now it's down to two. Give to Shade. Final 
from into this third quarter. You cannot deny Georgetown's fight. Hand from the corner, an air ball. As you said, Sarah, the one thing about this Georgetown team, just over 29% from three on the season. Tonight, UConn has given them the arc, and they've shot two for 14. Yeah. And so, again, not, not a strength to begin with. And well below that, credit to UConn's defense to go with it. And that was against Creighton, where Georgetown was able to open some things up because they shot the three ball a little bit better. Beckers took contact. And the putback's good for Samuels. Caden Samuels first points, final seconds here for Georgetown in the third. To Bennett with six. Bennett with four. Grace and Bennett with two. To get it off to beat the buzzer, Maya Bembry dies. Great play by Beverly on the finish and maybe a little juice here for Georgetown as you head into this fourth quarter. Georgetown showing their toughness and resilience all throughout this week and playing for their head coach all season long, Tasha Butts. Tasha named the head coach of this program back in April and passed away from cancer at the unfortunate age of 41 in October. All season long, these Hoyas have played for her and in her honor. The UConn Huskies have been dominant under head coach Gino Oriema. 30 regular season conference championships, 28 conference tournament titles, including 21 in the Big East, 22 Final Fours, 11 NCAA championships, last one in 2016, Oriama's longest drought since 1986 to 94, if drought is the way that you would put it. It's been amazing to watch just the standard that you kind of set, that Gina Oriama has set, the Hall of Famer, I and mean, look at this, the last three championships for UConn, 70 points per game nearly 52 percent from the field but the average margin of victory i mean that <laughs> big time they bring into tonight a 32 game conference tournament winning streak they haven't lost a conference tournament game since the last one in the old big east to notre dame back in 2013. oftentimes though whether we talk to Gino, whether we talk to some of these players, yes, it's about Big East tournament titles. Yes, it's about Big East regular season titles. It's also about hanging banners and hanging national championship banners. And that is something that no player on this current roster has done. And that is a part of the vision, the goals, and the aspirations that this group has to get back to. Even with all the injuries and the adversity, they don't stop. Jump ball, possession arrow with the Huskies. I beg your pardon, the Hoyas, as there is AZ Fudd on the bench. That unfortunate ACL injury, but she is planning to be back next year. Beckers announces she will be back. Mika Mule announced earlier this week that she will not be back. It's quite the photo shoot with Gino Oriema as well as Benbury hits. Well, I think, I mean, AZ Fudd, Aubrey Griffin, Caroline Ducharme, Ayanna Patterson. Like, think about oh. the, the players that they are playing without. And we mentioned Leah Edwards just, just these last two games, but throughout the course of the season, the impactful players that they have been still finding this level of success despite not having. Three on the shot clock, Beckers on the post up. Paige Beckers has 22 points. And now Beckers with the steal. Paige Beckers has scored 80 points in this tournament. And there's her mom. How proud she has to be. Now Arnold and Mule. Mule with a no look to KK Arnold. 
Samuels is there, and she's fouled. So you talked about those injured Huskies. Again, UConn down to seven available players now, which is the required amount you have to have to play a game in the Big East. To Lee Edwards, they hope to have her back for the NCAA tournament. But then from there, it's just a laundry list of season-ending injuries and misfortune. Well, that could be a starting lineup. But those, yes. those are all, uh, whether it's starters, key players, impactful players, those off the bat, I mean, that's... <laughs> That's significant, but that that's a part of the game, and that's the unfortunate part of the game that many programs, many schools, many teams have to deal with, but it feels like for UConn, it, it, there has been a consistency to it in particular in the last couple of seasons. And Sarah, a perfect Big East season, 28-5, the five losses have all come to teams ranked in the top 11 of the AP poll. As Coach Oriama said, you don't take this for granted. You don't take Paige Backers for granted. 27. Timeout Georgetown as they rise to their feet again to show their appreciation. Georgetown trying to hang with it behind Kelsey Ransom, but it has been a whole lot of Paige Beckers just pouring it on. From Diana to Maya to Tina to Stewie to Lobo to Bird to Swin, Sarah Kustak, it's goats on goats. They are 11 national titles for this program, and you said it. See, Renee Montgomery there. A lot of my my friends, my colleagues, people I get to still see along the way all the time. And, and again, it's it's hard to entirely put into words the foundation that is set. And I think the fun part is we look at the tournament resume for UConn net ranking of number two. You had already mentioned the fact that the losses for UConn this season all the teams in the most recent ap top 25 ranking are 11th or higher and so it's going to be interesting to see if there could be a possibility of them moving up to potentially that two seed line currently projected as a three seed but, but yeah it's it's tremendous what they've done and now where women's basketball is at college women's basketball the amount of competitive programs a balance up top every single conference tournament the fun matchups the rivalries all across the board it has been tremendous to watch grow and will continue to get bigger and better the more the eyes and the more that the audience the exposure the viewers the fans have an opportunity to see the talent that exists John Fanta, Sarah Kusta, wonderfully said. Kim Adams, our entire Fox Sports crew with you to cap off what has been an amazing Big East Women's Basketball Tournament. KK Arnold, short. And over the back on Samuels, we saw semifinals, UConn and Marquette, Megan Duffy's team, very much on that NCAA tournament bubble. Hopeful that they hear their name called on Sunday night in our other semifinal, Georgetown and Creighton. Creighton knows that they are going to hear their name called. Jim Flannery with a 25 and five season. And Arnold somehow reeled it in. She's got six rebounds. That's where, on top of a lot of different areas, the Huskies have been so good on the glass. Both the offensive glass, getting some second chance opportunities, but defensively they are finishing off possessions. Samuels from the corner. Hugh, the freshman. Talk 
talking with people, Sarah, at the half. They were talking about Ice Brady, people around the UConn program, people like Samuels, these freshmen. How big this is, not just for the NCAA tournament, but for the future seasons. The amount that they've been relied upon, the amount of experience they're getting now, earlier than expected. There's a foul on the Huskies. There's always a silver lining to look at in a lot of areas, in a lot of ways, and that's part of the growth that's part of sometimes being tossed in the fire before you feel like you may be ready and seeing what you have and we talked a lot about Ice Brady earlier as KK Arnold big round of applause but to see what you have what she is forced to play this amount of minutes the responsibility needed with Aaliyah Edwards that's something that you kind of had not experienced because of the consistent availability that Edwards has always provided and now you see the areas of the game that I'm sure Brady had showed Gino Oriana in practice but to do so at the stage and on this game and consistent possession after possession has been really impressive. Paige Beckers with 27 points, 83 on this tournament. That's a stuff from Brady. Up the floor and Bencourt blocked from behind by Bembry. This has been a block party here at Mohegan Sun. Everyone getting in on the action. Ice Brady, the latest. ESPN. Welcome back to Mohegan Sun, everybody. Big East Championship game, and you hate to see this. Brianna Scott out with a lower extremity injury suffered in yesterday's semifinal right near the end of the game against Creighton. Our thoughts are with Brianna as she continues to get that evaluated, and our thoughts are with our Fox Sports colleague, her mom, a proud, proud mom is here, Christy Winter Scott. Amazing mother, reflection of that in her daughter, and yeah, a big miss for Georgetown. And there's Ashlyn Shade. It, you think about what Scott had done off the bench. You mentioned earlier she was the sixth woman of the year in the Big East, averages about nine points per game, six rebounds. Can stretch out from the three-point line as well. And so it, for her to get things going as she comes off the bench offensively is something that the Hoyas have relied upon and are missing here this evening. Shot clock is at seven. into the hands of Cowan. Cowan attacks. Brady with straight up defense. Then court attacking, takes the hit and is fouled. And listen to this ovation for Beckers. Mom, Amy. She's a track and field star back in her college days here and watching. That's awesome. Venus Benport, a sophomore. One for two on that trip. What a showing here as Paige exits. She averaged 27.7 points per game in this tournament. Bennett with the turnaround. What a bright spot she's been for this Georgetown team. Impressive in the footwork, her ability to play with her back to the basket. I know this deficit looks large for Georgetown, but they've had flashes, they've had moments, they have fought. There's Shade all the way. Ashlyn Shade with 10. You're absolutely right. The fact that this Georgetown team again picked second to last in the Big East preseason poll has accomplished their first 20 win season since 2012. And they will have postseason basketball ahead of them, likely in the WBIT. Ransom is fouled. Mule steps off. Nine assists for Nika Mule. 
that's what she does. And for as much as we've talked about Paige Becker, her <laughs> the love, the hug, her organization of the offense at command of it. Mule is then picking apart this Georgetown defense and finding a lot of good looks for her teammates because of it. Samuels goes to the deck. And Arnold fouled from behind by Bennett. You said it, Sarah. Beckers and Mule, they've relied upon one another throughout their careers to be each other's rocks. Well, and think about what Nika Mule was doing with Paige Beckers out last season. Setting a single season assist record at UConn is something with given the names, the legends, the performances, says a lot. Fifth in all time career assist for the program. Arnold fouled on the take. They have formed one of the all time duos for this program. Mule, one of only five Huskies all time to reach that 600 career milestone. And now she's just eight assists. She'll enter the NCAA tournament, eight assists off Mariah Jefferson's all time program record of 659. Proud should Darnell Haney be of this team? Oh, endless amounts. For him, too. For him, this coaching staff, the, the program in general. Any Georgetown Hoya should be extraordinarily proud of the accomplishment, one of fighting to get here, where they're at, it, it just overall. And there's a, a lot more to come, but we, we've mentioned just the resiliency that they have played with the moxie, the grid, and it, they made this program proud. And I know you have talked to, to many former alumni, I know I have as well. It's, it's been extraordinary to watch this run, and I know this outcome is not probably what they expected and anticipated, but nonetheless, to, to be here, to be on the stage, put yourself in this position, yeah, pr pride doesn't doesn't do words justice uh, of how they should all feel. Earlier today, we were talking with Barbara Barnes, their SID, a double-digit amount of alumni that sent in videos congratulating them and wishing them luck tonight. Rebecca Brunson, Sugar Rogers, the list goes on and on there. This program has tradition, but they've never been to this Big East Championship and, game. And think about that, and that, that's, that's part of it. And it takes a first time to have more times, and that's what it's all about. I think 10, 20 years from now, when they meet back up on campus, they'll always be able to say they were the first to get here. Cowan is fouled. We'll talk about it more. We have a, a full post game coming for you right here on FS1. So keep it with us with the trophy presentation, reaction, and more. But you've seen UConn throughout this season. Obviously, Noah Lee Edwards makes a difference, and they hope to have her back for the NCAA tournament. What are your biggest takeaways from their performance tonight? How locked in they were from tip. And it's what you would anticipate in a championship game. They have been here before. It, but possession by possession, they, they got that jump right out of the gates. And Gino Oriemo, Oriemo, as you had said, talked about needing to play with the lead. And they did that quickly. They were efficient. They were effective. Paige Becker, some monster numbers. But it, it was the totality of this group and how connected they were at both ends. Samuels with an exclamation point. Georgetown beat Xavier. They beat third seeded St. John's. They beat second seeded Creighton to get here. 
certainly a performance to remember as this place rises again, a capacity crowd. Great to see here at Mohegan Sun, and UConn can dribble it out. In the midst of any and all adversity, the pulse of this Big East dynasty forges on. The UConn Huskies win their 22nd Big East tournament title. Tremendous amount of respect between these coaches, between these players, what we saw here on the floor. And Paige Becker's the Big East Player of the Year was extraordinary. She rose to the level of the moment, as who we so often see her do, and the team did as well. Shorthanded on both sides for both of these teams. But again, walking away from this one, there was a great level of compete, of fight, and that's exactly what you want to see when it comes to a championship setting. Three games in this tournament for Paige Becker. She scored 27 plus in each of them. And ended up with 83 points in the tournament, which is four off a three game record in the history of the Big East Conference. It was the points, it was the efficiency, it was the defense. The defense by this UConn team, the Paige Beckers in particular, the blocks setting the tone. That's where the pride should really factor in that it was the way that they're playing now and this is exactly when you want to be peaking as you're heading into the postseason. Connecticut, they have now won 11 consecutive conference tournaments from their time in the American. They never lost that championship. But now every year since falling to Notre Dame in 2013, they have been crowned the queens of their conference. And UConn will enter the NCAA tournament on a nine-game winning streak. They understand what it means at this time of the year, how you need to be playing. Tighten up the tighten up the laces, get ready, celebrate this one right now, but there's a lot more to come. Kim Adams is with this team's assist queen, Nika Mule. Thank you, John. Nika, we had to get the championship shirt on for this interview. You had already announced a couple days ago that this would be your last season as a UConn Husky. How does it feel to close out this final Big East game with the championship? Oh man, it feels amazing. I had no doubt in this team, not one second. And you know, stuff just keeps hitting us, man. You know, we have we had our Aliyah out. She, she's everything to us, and we just came together and we and we did it, man. A major respect to the Georgetown team. Um, they're great, um, but I'm just so proud of my team and so 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 happy. I'm so happy. And I can see some emotion in your eyes. How would you sum up just what this UConn program has meant to you coming over from Croatia and spending four years of your life here? I mean, how do I sum it up? Sum it up? Just look at this. <laughs> look at them. Like, that, that's how I sum it up. That's how I sum it up. <laughs> this is it's so much more in basketball here. And I, I couldn't pick a better place to come and spend four years here. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for the time, Nika. That's the emotion of March. Says it all. Nika Mule, what this program, what this experience means to her. It never gets old. And Connecticut, the Huskies are Big East Tournament champions. Yet again, we'll be back with a confetti and a trophy presentation. and the UConn Huskies rejoice because they've won their 22nd Big East Tournament crown. Now let's head to the stage for the trophy presentation with Kim Adams.
Mohegan Sun Arena live audience. And we are going to kick things off with a few words from our fantastic Big East Conference Commissioner, Val Ackerman. Thanks, Kim. Um, I want to commend um, our runner-up, the Tasha Tough Georgetown Hoyas, for an inspired run and a great season. And hats off to all of our schools for uh, a great season and a very competitive and hard-fought year. I want to thank all of you, the fans here at Mohegan Sun Arena, for your amazing support of the Big East women's basketball programs. Thank you so much. Our champion, our champion had the coach of the year, the player of the year, the freshman of the year, was the runner-up, was the regular season title winner, is now won its 22nd Big East Tournament crown. It is my great pleasure to present the 2024 Big East Conference Women's Basketball Championship Trophy to Coach Oriema and the Yukon Huskies. We are going to speak with the man himself, Coach Gino Oriyama, as we let the confetti clear. Coach, it seems like these last couple of seasons now, your group has just been dealt challenge after challenge, yet you complete an undefeated Big East regular season. You're here hoisting your 22nd Big East Tournament Championship trophy. How would you describe how this year's team has just continued to ride every wave of this season? Uh, <clears throat> well, I, I would like to say that uh, as, as, um, as much as, um, you know, I'm obviously excited for, um, for UConn and, 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 and all those tournament championships, all of them are unique in their own way, all of them are special, but the way it played out this year and the way we had to play these three games under the circumstances that we had to play, um, I don't think any of them were ever, ever quite this, uh, this challenging for, the, for this team, for these kids. It was incredible. Um, I mean, to, to, to see what they did and, and you know, they were at practice every day and, and then they have to play and, and there's going to be no substitutes. There's not going to be any, hardly any, um, any times for breaks or it's just you got to play and you got to play through whatever. We're playing well, we're playing poorly, we're fatigued, whatever the case may be. But I think you just find that extra something, you know, because you have such a legacy to live up to here when you come here and play. Um, I mean, Ice just played 80 minutes in two games. You know. I don't think she went 80 minutes consecutively in practice one time. Um, and that's, I think that's what makes it special is that sometimes you don't know what's inside people until they're put in a situation where they, they've really got to dig down and see what they have. And, and this opportunity may show them and show you all just incredible toughness and the resilience that these guys have. And um, obviously we're all proud at Connecticut of all of our championships, but this one, um, given what we went through. And it's, um, we're, we're gonna celebrate this one really, really, really good. All right, 
Coach, we appreciate it. We are going to bring back Val Ackerman, who I think has one more trophy to give out. Woo. Thanks, Val. She was the um, Big East Player of the Year, the Scholar Athlete of the Year. Her line tonight was 27 points, four rebounds, three assists, five blocks, and three steals. The most outstanding player of the 2024 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament from UConn, Paige Beckers. Congratulations. Before we talk to you a little bit, I do want to point out a little history. Paige Beckers today becomes just the third ever player to repeat Big East Tournament Most Outstanding Player, joining Shelly Penafather from Villanova and UConn great Carol Walters. Congratulations, Paige. Paige, it seems like from November until this very final Big East game of the season, there has been a theme of players needing to step up. How would you describe how you've seen your teammates do that all season long? Yeah, um, I read a devotional every time before the game, and this, this one this morning was play the hand you were dealt, and that's been our theme the entire season. So everybody stepped up. Uh, Today it was uh, me and Nika, the two seniors and all of our little kids, um, but everybody stepped up in so many different ways. Um, the energy on the bench from these guys who didn't play was amazing always the entire season, so they played a part in this as well. The coaching staff, the training staff, the massage staff, the strength and conditioning staff, everybody who works here at UConn just played a huge part in just keeping us together and keeping us solid. Um, there could have been plenty of times where we wanted to just bow down and quit, but we just keep on fighting. We're, this is the most resilient group I've ever been around. And this one is very rewarding, so I'm very happy about this one. And Paige, one year ago we were at a similar scene, but you were one of the players in the sweatsuits. I know you want to get your teammates out of these sweatsuits, but how would you describe the emotions you feel with your journey back to the court now in this moment holding up a couple of trophies? Yeah, a year ago I was I would have done anything to be in basketball shoes instead of streetwear, just playing in the most important month of basketball. Um, so I'm extremely grateful. Uh, I wouldn't be here without God and all my teammates and my coaching staff. Um, I just wanted to embrace it and have fun because I missed it so much the entire year last year. Um, and I'm just extremely grateful to be healthy and playing basketball. We're loving seeing you back out there. Paige Becker's most outstanding player. Congratulations. Before we send it back to the TV broadcast, I think there's somebody that this crowd would really love to hear from. Aaliyah Edwards, would you join us up at the front? Aaliyah, I know I speak for a lot of people here, a lot of people watching, that it made us really sad to not be able to see you out on the court to finish out this Big East tournament. How would you describe how your teammates, how this Husky family has kept you uplifted during this time? Super, super proud. Um, even though I was down, my energy was up on the bench. I was still a part of the team, still playing with my teammates, and my teammates got the job done! There was no question at all. Everyone stepped up. Everyone played together. and We played UConn basketball. All right, Ali Edwards, I hope we see you out there. NCAA tournament. UConn Huskies 2024 Big East tournament champions for the 22nd time. Congratulations, everybody. John Fanta, we will send it back to you on the FS1 broadcast. Thank you, Kim. Play with the hand you're dealt. They did and they're champions because of it. The power of faith and dealing with adversity. We'll be back to talk more about the champion Huskies.